Hello students, welcome to Edupedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is Anatomy of Flowering Plant. In this section of the video, we will discuss about the introduction of the internal form or features of angiosperms, which are also called as flowering plants. Okay, What you are looking at is internal morphology of a plant organ. Okay, Internal morphology, it is also called as anatomy. I have already taught you in detail in the chapter morphology of flowering plant. Okay, Anatomically, it is, if you see, then uh, tissue is a group of similar or dissimilar cells that has common origin and they cooperate with one another to perform similar or set of similar functions and that is called as tissue. So this is tissue, an aggregate of similar cells, okay, similar or dissimilar cells that have common origin and they cooperate with one another to perform similar or set of similar functions, okay. Now the primary part, it is made up of four tissue types. I repeat, the primary plant, it is made up of four tissue types, which are those one, two, three and four. Meristematic tissue, ground tissue, dermal tissue and vascular tissue. Meristematic tissue, they have the power of cell division. So division of new cells for new growth and repair is the functional role of meristematic tissue. Okay. Then comes ground tissue. Ground tissue, uh, it is uh, considered as bulk tissue because it forms most of the area of the cell. That's why it is called as bulk tissue. It is used for storage, processing and main function of ground tissue is to provide physical support. Then comes dermal tissue whose functional role is to provide protection and sometimes nutrient absorption students. And then comes fourth tissue type and that is vascular tissue which are xylem and phloem that helps in the movement of fluid, food and physical support. Okay, Plant tissue classification. Students on the basis of their capacity to divide, it is divided into two, meristematic and permanent tissue. Meristematic tissue are the similar cells that are capable of dividing and they have the capability to form new cells or they help in the repair process and then comes permanent tissue. Similar or dissimilar cells they have lost the capacity of division and they attain a permanent shape. That's why its name is permanent tissue because it attains permanent shape, size and function. Now, what are the main characteristics of the cells of meristematic tissue students? They are living, they are thin walled, vacuoles they are few and they are smaller in size. The cells they contain a dense protoplasm and a bigger conspicuous nuclei. And meristematic tissue they are spherical in shape, they can be oval in shape, they can be polygonal in shape and they do not store reserve food material and they are in an active state of metabolism because they keep on dividing. Okay. Now permanent tissue, let's talk about the permanent tissue. Permanent tissue it is composed of the cells that have lost the power of division and they attain a definite form and shape. Permanent tissue may be classified into three main groups which are those first is simple and second is complex and third is a special tissue. Okay, So it is classified into three main groups. First is parenchyma, what it is? Parenchyma you can say that uh, this is a type of permanent tissue and few layers of the cells they form the basic packing tissue okay that means they are that compactly arranged okay that's why they form the basic packing tissue it consists of relatively unspecialized cells with thin cell walls they are live cells they are usually loosely packed so that large spaces between the cells they are found in this is tissue Okay, then comes chlorenchyma and arenchyma. What it is? It is another permanent tissue. Chlorenchyma, this tissue, it provides support to plant and it also stores food. In some tissue uh, situations, it contains chlorophyll and thus they perform photosynthesis. That means they make their own food and that's why it is called as chlorenchyma. 
chlorine means because it has chlorophyll in it see this green dots are chlorophyll another permanent tissue is aryngyma in aquatic plants not in terrestrial plants in aquatic plants large air cavities are present in parenchyma and that gives buoyancy to the plant to help them float in the water such a parenchyma tissue or type is called as parenchyma aren means air okay that means it has air cavities in it that's why it help in the buoyancy uh, or it give buoyancy to the plant to help them float in water okay so the parenchyma of stem and root they also store nutrients and water okay i'm talking about the parenchyma see this is parenchyma and these uh, small small are the air cavities then another permanent tissue is collenchyma the flexibility in plant it is due to another permanent tissue and that is called as collenchyma it allows easy bending in various parts of the leaf such as this leaf stem without breaking it also provides mechanical support to the plant and where do you find this tissue you can find this tissue in leaf stalk below the epidermis okay and the cell of this tissue they are living they are elongated and they are irregularly thickened at the corners as you can see this uh, black color is showing the thickness at the corner okay so the cell of this tissue they are living and they are elongated and they are irregularly thickened at the corners there is very little intercellular space can you find the intercellular space between the two cells no because it is thickened okay at the corner so there is very little or no intercellular space present between the cells of the collenchyma then comes sclerenchyma sclerenchyma it is the tissue which makes the plant hard and stiff and it is uh, dead in nature that means unlike parenchyma collenchyma parenchyma it is a dead tissue which makes the plant hard and stiff we have seen the husk of coconut what it is it is made up of sclerenchyma it is tissue students and the cell of this tissue they are dead and they are long they are narrow as the ball was are taken due to lignin lignin is a chemical substance that acts as a cement and that hardens them okay so this is sclerenchyma often these wall are so thick that there is no internal space inside the cell okay now we'll talk about the meristem meristem is it is derived from a word meristose which means divisible that means meristematic cells they keep on dividing so immature cells they are capable of dividing indefinitely like this okay they keep on dividing and that to for indefinite period of time okay so this is meristematic tissue they are thin wall they have no intercellular space between the cells of the meristematic tissue and they are isodiametric in nature that means all cells they are of same diameter and this is the typical meristematic tissue Uh, diagrammatic representation this is the nucleus which is conspicuous in nature and this is the cytoplasm okay this is the ts of meristem ts is the transverse section a single meristematic cell it has a thin elastic cell wall which is made up of cellulose and it has conspicuous nuclei it has dense cytoplasm as you can see okay but it has no vacuole and these are the mitochondria which help meristematic cells to continue cell division and cell repair process so more mitochondria means high rate of respiration due to high metabolism then comes classification of meristem based on origin and development based on position in plant body and based on function so based on origin and development they are of three types promeristem primary meristem and secondary meristem now based on position in plant body it is divided into apical intercalary and lateral and based on function they are again divided into three first is protoderm procambium and ground meristem okay now type of meristem classification based on origin and development 
on the basis of origin and development of initiating cells meristems can be divided into three types which are those first is promeristem it is also called as primordial meristem it is a group of young meristematic cells of a growing organ okay so you can say that it is an early embryonic meristem which is found in the embryo of young meristematic cell or of a growing organ from which other advanced meristems can be derived and in plant it occupies a small area at the tip of stem and root it further divides to form primary meristem that means promeristem divides to form primary meristem now we'll talk about the primary meristem they are derived from promeristem and they are present below the promeristem at shoot and root apices and these cells they divide and they form permanent tissue students that means primary meristem when it keeps on dividing that it forms permanent tissue then comes secondary tissue it is derived from primary permanent tissue which have the capacity of division such as cork cambium cambium of root and interfascicular cambium of stem students okay so these are the examples of secondary meristem see this is uh, the primary meristem protoderm ground meristem and procambium and primary tissue uh, is epidermis which is derived from protoderm pith and cortex are the primary tissue which are derived from ground meristem and primary xylem and primary phloem they are derived from procambium and later in uh, as a lateral meristem cortex is formed as cork cambium in dicots and uh, it forms uh, cork and phloderm as a secondary tissue and uh, primary xylem and primary phloem they act as vascular cambium as lateral meristem and it later on forms secondary xylem and secondary phloem tissues okay so this was about the stem apical meristem likewise root apical meristem uh, protoderm give rise to epidermis ground meristem give rise to cortex and procambium give rise to vascular surrender and this way this uh, progression takes place now this is another classification which is based on the position on the basis of their position in the plant body meristem are of three types which are those students first is intercalary meristem it lies between the region of a permanent tissue and it is considered as a part of primary meristem which has become detached due to the formation of intermediate permanent tissue okay so this yellow is representing intercalary meristem and it is found either at the base of the leaf for example it is seen in pinus or at the base of internode okay then comes lateral meristem these are arranged parallel to the sites of origin and they normally divide periclinically and it give rise to secondary permanent tissue and this increases the size or the thickness or the girth of the plant part okay such as vascular meristem and cork cambium internal go growth in girth girth means breadth of the plant which involves secondary tissue such as xylem and phloem because of the secondary tissue plant grows in breadth in the fascicular region the cambial cells they divide towards the center from and form xylem tissue and towards the outside it forms uh, phloem tissue okay so you can say that interfascicular uh, cambium it indicates a cambium that is between the fasciles of xylem and fasciles of phloem so you can say that it is present between xylem and phloem then comes cork cambium it is the external girth that is uh, grown beyond the phloem area and they form the characteristic uh, cocky layer as well as internal layer okay now third classification is based on the function meristems have been classified into three types based on their function first is protoderm meristem it is the outermost layer of the young growing region which develops to form epidermal tissue system okay epidermal means outer layer and then comes procambium meristem it is composed of narrow elongated meristematic cell that give rise to vascular tissue system such as xylem and phloem 
वस्कुलर टिश्यू सिस्टम मीन्स साइलम एंड फ्लोएम कंडक्टिंग टिश्यूज देन थर्ड क्लासिफिकेशन बेस्ड ऑन द फंक्शन इज ग्राउंड मेरिस्टम इट इज कंपोज ऑफ लार्ज थिक वॉल्ड सेल्स विच डेवलप फॉर ग्राउंड टिश्यू सिस्टम सच एज हाइपोडर्मिस कॉटेक्स एंड पिथ ओके सो दीज is uh, you can say that it it is also called as bulk tissue because it acquires large area of the cell and this was all about the first section or introduction to the chapter anatomy of flowering plants or angiosperms in my next section of the presentation we'll discuss about the meristem based on origin and development and on the function Okay so till then stay tuned and keep watching edupedia word videos thank you